My name is Bri Sargent. I have been a workplace safety professional for nearly 20 years and I have trained over 100 safety managers. Here at The Safety Geek, I love to talk about management support and commitment, the psychology of safety, and how to build a safety culture. Today, we are talking about repeater programs. If you don't know what a repeater program, it's how you address employees that have had multiple accidents or injuries. Not necessarily the same kind of accident or injuries, or just accidents and injuries in general. So let me tell you a story about my approach to repeater programs. So I had this, this employee that worked, worked at my facilities. His name was Steve. That was actually his name too, but his name was Steve. And his job didn't really require him to lift very much, but he had strained his forearm. And, you know, it was a minor injury and a lot of people thought he was whining over it or whatever. I didn't care. I was just like, follow the process, right? I'm, I'm a process person. So I'm like, you put them through the process, you put them through the cycle. He ended up getting treatment and about six months down the road, he was at MMI, which is maximum medical improvement. And he had no restriction. He was full 100%. So he went back to work. And then like a few months after that, he started complaining that his arm was still hurting him again. Not a new incident, but you know, the arm is still bothering me. So I ended up sending him back to the doctor. And then a few months after that, he got into a different accident and he strained his arm again. And I was just like, something's going on. I went to Steve and I was just like, look, you know, what's going on with you? What is this? And, you know, maybe a non-lifting position would be better for you. A lot of people might have like automatically turned into like, how do you fire Steve? How do you get rid of Steve? I turned it into, how can I find a better position that fits for you? So we found a better position that fit for him. He agreed to try it out and he ended up excelling in this position. It was amazing. Within like six months, he was actually like promoted to like a team leader. And I think like within a year, he ended up supervising that department. It was just incredible. So I want you to look at repeater programs as like these can, when you work with these employees, they can end up being your best employees. It's why I love job jeopardy programs, which we'll probably talk about in the future and repeater programs because one thing is, is that it's not about firing the employee. It's about changing their behavior. And I'm sure I'll get into that in my notes. The first thing I want to talk about about repeaters is that it is not normal to have more than one accident in the workplace. It really isn't. Like a lot of people kind of look at it like, oh, it's just the, the cost of doing business or, or yes, people are definitely going to have their little cuts and bruises and all of that. That is not the right mindset. Because if you actually look at your claims data, if you run a claims report and look at your claims data, you don't have that many repeaters. A very small percentage of your employees are getting into multiple accidents. That should be telling you that this is not a normal thing. So when you treat it as this is not normal. We need to have an intervention. We need to do something about it. It's a different approach than when you just stand back and not look at the data and you're just like, hey, yeah, repeaters happen. It's no big deal, right? A lot of people, they'll look at repeating repeaters and they, they think, you know, we need to get rid of them because honestly, you have two choices with repeaters. You can either rehabilitate them or you can find a reason to terminate them. And that's generally what most HR departments and most management teams will do. If somebody starts having repeat accidents, all of a sudden that person gets written up for every little thing and they start searching for a way to get rid of them because they see them as a liability. In my experience, that if you actually work with that employee and you rehabilitate them, you, you figure out what's going on, in the end, you end up with a better employee and a better relationship with that employee. And that spreads across the board to all your other employees because then they see that you're not out to get them, you're there to help them, right? And not just you, the entire management team. Repeater programs, you they're not really canned either. They have to be very specific to the employee that is having the repeat accidents. But you can come up with a process. So step one of your process is to identify who your repeaters are. So you should have a system in place where maybe you're doing a claims run every month or every quarter, um, or maybe you have a system that will like show you the chart of your repeaters. I kept all of my accidents and incidents in a spreadsheet that I could pivot table and I had one worksheet that had that pivot table of my repeaters, right? And you have to determine what 
range are you going to look at? And this is why I like pivot tables because you can select ranges in there. But um, I would do like a 12 month and see if I had any repeaters in the last 12 months. And then I would look at three years. Who were my repeaters in the last three years? And maybe those are the ones I would put through a program. If I didn't have any in three years, then I would look at five years. So I wouldn't go much further than five years. But even repeating an accident in five years or having two accidents in five years is not a common thing. Even look at your yourself. Think about the last time you had to go to the doctor for an accident or an injury. How many times does that happen, right, for yourself? I mean, if you have like an entire family, you're, you're multiplying that by, you know, four or five people. I know, especially people with young kids, you might end up having to go more often. But just keep in mind that it's not a common thing for people to get hurt in the workplace. So... Determine your, your range that you're looking for and create a system that you're looking at this report regularly. I looked at mine quarterly because I believe in looking at reactive data on a quarterly basis, not on a, a monthly or a weekly basis. Step two is then look at those repeaters and don't take that for face value. Just because they have repeat claims does not mean they're a repeater. So you need to dive deep into the accidents that they had and really look at the investigations and say, are they truly a repeater? Because what happens is that sometimes people get into accidents that are not repeat accidents. They they got hit by somebody else, right? So let's talk about like motor vehicle accidents. If they were stopped at a stoplight and somebody rear-ended them, there's really not much they could have done. That doesn't really make them a repeater if, you know, one time it was their fault and another time it was someone else's. So that's your next step is like really question, are they truly a repeater? So before you even put them in the program, you're going to be looking at that. And then step three is to create a plan of action. So before you even approach the employee, you want to go to their manager, to their supervisor, and you want to say, hey, you know, let's talk about this. I'm seeing this, this person is a repeater. How do you think we need to fix this? And then come up with a way where you're coming up with a plan to um, address the issue. And this is where I say every repeater is different. Right, some repeaters might just need retraining. Some repeaters might need, um, you know, a mentor or something like that. And we'll get into different things you can throw in your your program. But before you actually talk to the employee, talk to the manager too. So that way you you kind of have a rough draft in your head of what you're going to put the person through, and then the next step is to have that conversation with the with the employee. So when you have the conversation with the repeater. You want to have it from a place of you're looking out for their well-being because there could be legitimate reasons why they are getting injured or having multiple accidents, right? So you, you want to make sure that you understand that you're talking to them not to fire them. This is, we're concerned for your well-being because this is not normal and that we think something is going on and this is what we're seeing. Let's talk about it. And what this brings up is um, a story that we had this we had this facility that we went into and it was they were performing pretty well but you know as a regional safety manager you're always looking for anomalies and things like that and in their trucks they had a video camera system where it actually caught near misses so we started examining near misses. And then we found this one driver that had an excessive number of near misses. Like he was almost falling asleep at the wheel. He never got into an accident, but he, he had several close calls. And then we looked at his history and he didn't have them in his history. It was just this short period of time, like the previous couple of months. So we talked to the management team. And we were like, okay, what kind of retraining should we put him through? Maybe he has sleep apnea, you know, who knows, right? So we kind of got some ideas together. And then we called the employee in. And of course, he thought he was going to be fired. And we were just like, no, dude, this is what we're seeing. And we need to know what's going on because, you know, you've been lucky and we're afraid you're not going to continue to be lucky. He says to me, I know what's going on. There's a lot of family issues going on. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And he's like, yeah, my wife left me two months ago. And now I'm a single father. So I'm trying to arrange, you know, daycare and getting my kids to school and all of these other things. He's like, I can't afford pre preschool and all of this. 
And it was just such a life change for him that he was so embarrassed that his wife had left him. He didn't share it with anybody at work. So they kept giving him his normal schedule. And he's trying to juggle raising two kids and his normal schedule, plus the stress of, you know, the the event itself. And it was just like, oh, well, let's help you. <laughs> you know, we got HR involved. We got him set up with some local um you know how different counties and different states have different programs to help people. So we got that. And I mean, we never fired him. I think we ended up giving him a couple of days off to catch up on his rest because we were seriously concerned he was going to fall asleep at the wheel. But it ended up turning him around. And what message did that send? Not only to him, but to the entire um, employee force was like, no, we're here to help you. Keep that in mind too. So a lot of times your repeaters, they might have things going on. Like I had a repeater one time who ended up having diabetes, undiagnosed diabetes. And that was, and it was actually brought about through the repeater program. So that's interesting too. So that's why I'm so against just firing people or looking for reasons to fire people. I want to actually work with them. There's, this is not normal. Let's figure out what's going on. So once you've had this conversation with your employee, then the next step is to create a plan. Okay, work with the employee. This is what we're thinking as the plan moving forward. And it's all coming from a place of you're looking out for them. So yeah, sure, you're putting them through maybe retraining or excess observations or coaching and things like that but it's in order for them to keep their jobs because if they keep having accidents either they're going to get hurt and they're not going to be able to do the job or you'll have no choice but to get rid of them right that's basically how you would create a repeater program so some elements that you want to put into your program is lots and lots of communication and a lot of reinsurance that it's not about firing them Right, so you might end up having like weekly check-ins with safety or monthly check-ins or something like that, depending upon the severity of the repeats. You might throw in retraining. So you make sure that they're trained properly and then you do excess observations. So you're doing maybe an observation a week or an observation every two weeks on that employee where normally they might only get touched once a month, right? Um, and the key thing is don't rush the process. Don't think that you have a repeater, here's the program, in two weeks they're gonna be out of the program. Generally, repeater programs will last three to six months because that it takes a long time to change that behavior. It's not like you can just do it overnight. So you wanna make sure that you're giving it time. And be open to changing their position like I had to do with Steve. So when you change somebody's position, it all depends upon your labor laws and your state. But most of the time, you're not going to be able to change their pay. So you're putting them in a different position at the same pay. Um, and you don't want to force them into that. You want to offer it to them. So like when I offered it to Steve, I said, look, you keep hurting your arm and I don't want to see that happen. Maybe a lifting position isn't right for you. I know you're not lifting very much. I think he was only lifting like 30 or 40 pounds. I said, but maybe if we can find you a position where you don't have to lift that much, and you could just like do maybe fine motor skills or something like that. And he was very open to it because he was just like, yeah, you're not firing me. You want me to try? It? I'll learn something new. So be open to that as well. So like our driver, we might have offered him a warehouse position until he got back on his feet. Who knows? So just be open to do that. Now, some other ideas I want to share with you on what you can do with your repeaters, which have nothing to do with the program, but you can like select these people to help you out, right? I love to put my repeaters in my safety committee. Having your accident prone people in your safety committee, you, you may think it's like, why would I do that? It's because they know what could happen. They're your devil's advocate. They're the ones that are like, oh yeah, I would totally trip over that, you know, that type of thing. So including them in your safety committee is a great way to start changing their behavior. You could also have them mentor new hire employees. I know you're like, that's craziness. <laughs> I get it. But it's actually the best way to learn something. So if you want somebody to learn a new behavior, have them teach it, have them teach it to a new employee. They will actually retain 90% of that information. So giving them that opportunity to maybe lead the safety meetings or be an, be a mentor to a new employee right? You can also have them do department assessments and department observations because that kind of opens up their eyes to what's going on too. 
Another thing that might be causing a lot of repeaters too, especially in the U.S., is exercise, weight loss, and health, right? We really don't have a good system in the U.S., and there's a definitely an obesity problem around here. So if you can have programs at your facility that emphasize exercise, weight loss, and health, when you have healthy people, they're less likely to be injured too. So a lot of, I really think that a lot of our back injuries or MSDs, things like that, could be prevented by a really good exercise and health program. So a lot of people think, well, I'm working, I'm exercising enough, I'm walking all the time, but your body gets used to that type of of movement. So you kind of need the exercise program too. And another program that you might want to add, which is a bit harder, it would have to be through your HR program, is an EAP program. That's an employee assistance program. Those generally offer mental health services. So like our driver who was having all those problems, we we connected him with the with our EAP program. So yeah, we were helping him get community services, but then he also got um you know, the health, the mental health that he needed as well. So a bit more expensive on that one, but it is definitely worth having if your facility is larger and you can afford that. So that is everything I have for you on repeater programs. I absolutely love them, like I said. So, you know, moving forward, you know, create a way that you're actually identifying your repeaters. Once you start identifying them, it becomes a lot easier for you to create a program and actually do something about it. And then just start developing a starter program. I think that every facility should have like a starter repeater program, and then you just modify it for whoever you need to use it for. And you shouldn't have that many. Any. I mean, I when I manage 39 locations, like each location, they might have two to five repeaters, and that's it, right? And remember, it's not about firing them. It's about changing their behavior. And when you change that focus and change that mindset, it really makes your program excel. If you like this stuff, if you like what we're talking about here at Safety Geek, make sure that you get on my mailing list. And the easiest way to do that is get on the safetygeek.com forward slash five ways. And what I'll do is I will send you a free guide on the five ways to make your employees crazy about safety. And then you'll get on my newsletter list. You guys have an amazing day and I will chat with you next week. Bye bye.